But we begin with the greatest smoke and mirror show ever that is taking place in the windy city of Chicago. Call it a management game of chess, sheer brilliance, or cunning manipulation. The Chicago Bulls ownership brought Iowa State coach Tim Floyd into the fold Thursday, but still managed to leave the door wide open for both Phil Jackson and Michael Jordan to return. The Bulls named Floyd director of operations, not head coach, so the ball is back in Michael's court. And the pressure is on MJ to either make his loyal Chicago fans happy once again or miserable. Now, Floyd can't be made the scapegoat, as made clear by owner Jerry Reinsdorf. The position of head coach of the Chicago Bulls is not going to be filled at this time. It will be left open, perhaps until the end of the lockout. We should Phil not return by the end of the lockout. Tim will succeed him as head coach of the Chicago Bulls. I don't know if anybody can fill Coach Jackson's shoes. All I can do is try to achieve to the best of Tim Floyd's abilities and hope that our teams play to their abilities. I have every reason to believe that that will happen because our teams have always done that in the past. We have complete confidence uh, in Tim's ability to do the job and uh, we're going that way. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is a good day. Give me a chance. If you give me a chance, I'm going to give you time. I'm going to give you respect and I'm going to give you context. But don't call me Jerry Krause's boy, okay? It's very important to us that Michael come back. It's very important that we give him that opportunity to do the things that, uh, that he'd like to do and finish his career out. Uh, anybody that it would ever say that Jerry Cross doesn't want Michael Jordan back has got to be crazy because uh, he's meant so much to my life. I know this much. I was not about to take this job if I thought that it would prevent in any way Michael Jordan's return to the game. Oh my, somebody stop the nightmare. Oh. We're trapped in a real life version of Groundhog Day, the movie, and with all due respect to Bill Murray, this is getting really old. Bill Jackson, not to be confused with Puxatani Phil, has already boxed up his office. The former coach of the Bulls is long gone and has no plans to return. Remember, the Hollywood ending to the Bulls happened a month ago. It's time to go, and, and I've been pushing at this horn a little bit for the last couple years about leaving and being ready to leave, and it's my time to go. It's the right time for me. And they say that breaking up is hard to do, but come on. In case Phil didn't drive the point home, it is over. Benito, bye-bye. Mr. Jackson has gone off into the sunset. Just ask his agent. They made up their mind last year when they said this is the last year that Phil will coach the team. And in private said to us, Phil could win 82 games in the regular season and we will not have him back. So has, it, has there been a bit of a charade? Yes. There was certainly no insincerity on Phil's part when he said goodbye to Chicago uh, a month ago. He's very comfortable with the decision that he made. It was the right decision for him at that time. He's going to step away from coaching. He'll be back, just not to coach the Chicago Bulls. Of course, the bottom line in all of this is that no one wants to be responsible for the retirement of the greatest basketball player ever to play the game. Oh, no. They're all staying clear of that one. And, Jeannie, the sad truth is that after the smoke clears, one man may unfairly take all the heat regardless, and that's Tim Floyd, who we've been talking about. For more on the decision to go with Floyd, Fox Sports News correspondent Ann Werner caught up with a major player in the hiring. Thanks, guys. Joining me right now is Jerry Krause. And Mr. Krause, are you satisfied with the new arrangement right now that Tim Floyd is director of basketball well, operations? Certainly. certainly. We've created it this way, and uh, it's good for the franchise today, and it's good tomorrow, and it's going to be good in future years. Given the NBA lockout, how do you proceed with getting in touch with Michael Jordan? Well, illegally, we're not allowed to talk to him. And so for right now, you'll just have to wait on that matter. Mm -hmm. So then the question is trying to get Phil Jackson back in the fold. Where do you go on that? Well, all those things will be accomplished in due time, and, and we're looking forward to uh, uh, the future. At today's press conference, Tim Floyd said he's energetic. Bulls fans can expect that. If, if and when he's on the coach on the sidelines, he'll be ready to stick with the type of basketball you've established. Is that what you see from him? I see a lot of things from him. He's going to be an outstanding coach in this league, and uh, uh, we think he has all the ability to do the things that uh, to carry on the great tradition of Chicago Bulls. How tough is it, given that this organization has won 
six NBA world titles, the thought of going for a seventh, is it a little bit overwhelming or are you energized at this point? I think you're always energized. Uh, you're in a situation where if we can bring back the team, uh, certainly we have to be looked at as a team that can win it again. And uh, that's always fun. And it's a whole lot better looking at that situation than it is uh, looking at uh, the opposite situation. You've certainly given Chicago a great situation to be in. Jerry Krause, thanks for joining us. And right now, back to the Fox Network Center. All right, Ann, thank you very much for that interview. And we're not done getting bullish with you folks. Later in this hour, we'll ask the question that many basketball fans want to know. Tim Floyd, who are you? <laughs> oh, yeah. More now from the soap opera that is the Chicago Bulls. We'll try to answer the question as to why the three-time defending world champs hired Tim Floyd, a guy who went 12-18 and 18 last year for Iowa State, a guy who has never taken a team past the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament, and a guy whom Michael says he won't play for, a guy who finds himself under our spotlight. Tim Floyd's roots take us to West Texas, where he started his career as the recruiting specialist under the legendary Don Haskins. From there, Floyd went to Idaho as head coach, then to the University of New Orleans. While at UNO, Floyd met a 6'11 center named Irvin Johnson, took him under his wing and taught him how to play the game. Today, Johnson is the center for the Milwaukee Bucks. While coaching New Orleans, Floyd ran into the general manager of the Chicago Bulls, Jerry Krause. They immediately became friends. He came up to me after a game and he said, uh, uh, young fellow, one day I think you're going to have an opportunity to coach in the NBA. From the Bayou, Floyd headed north to Iowa State, a solid program and a strong conference. Floyd was a defense first coach, and his full court presses gave other teams fits. His teams were known not for talent, but for hustle and intensity, representative of their coach. And I firmly believe uh, that Tim Floyd is a, a person who can handle the youth of today, who has been recruiting them all over the country and has had great recruiting classes for Iowa State University. In 1996, Floyd was AP runner-up for National Coach of the Year honors. He has always been a good X's and O's coach and a fine recruiter. His first real coup as head man in Chicago would be to talk his star recruit into returning for another year. I'd love an opportunity to sit down with Michael if he says, hey, look, I've got some basketball left in me. I still think I can play. Anybody that it would ever say, that Jerry Krause doesn't want Michael Jordan back. It's got to be crazy because uh, he's meant so much to my life and uh, he's meant so many good things uh, to my family. At an Iowa State-Kansas game in 1997, several scouts were in attendance to watch lottery picks Rafe LaFrance and Paul Pierce. Among the scouts was Jerry Krause. Barring a trade, the Bulls had no chance at any high first-round picks that year. Wonder who he was scouting. I'm proud of my, my friendship with Jerry Krause. He's a good guy, but uh, I don't think I'm any more his boy than uh, Phil Jackson was 11 years ago or uh, Tony La Russa, um, Doug Collins, uh, you name him. He possesses the things that a great coach must have, knowledge, character, and leadership. And he has consistently shown as a coach that his teams can beat teams with greater ability. If Michael and Scotty stick to their word, he's going to have to. But first, more on the Bulls. After yesterday's Jerry and Jerry show, that was both a compliment and an insult to the world of PR, we the media converged on the guys that Jerry and Jerry are trying to place all the blame upon. Phil Jackson's response in a moment, but first, this was the scene today in Chicago as Michael arrived for the summer basketball camp that is named for him. MJ not interested in talking as he once again played dodgeball with the media. As for Michael's favorite basketball coach, life in Montana too good for Phil Jackson to give up. So coach, what's your official response to Jerry Reinsdorf yesterday? Is it thanks but no thanks? You got it. Uh, and, I, and I'll speak to Jerry. Jerry Reinsdorf and I'll talk personally, so uh, you know, we'll cover that ground. But for you guys that have made this trip out here and for the people in Chicago that are waiting to hear this, uh, thanks for uh, the warm regards. And uh, thank you guys for uh, you making the effort. But uh, the story is sealed. Now check this out. As mentioned, Michael was in attendance at his own summer basketball camp, and ironically enough, 
The campers snagged the scoop for the story in Chicago. If the, if the Jerry came to you and asked you who you would want as coach, who would it be and why? Another plant of a question. Well, I mean, all along I've said that I would, I, everything's been working with Phil Jackson, so that would be my suggestion. If Phil, if Phil does come back, um, would that make your decision easier for coming back? What was the question? If Phil does come back, back, does that mean I still make... I, would it be easier for you to make your decision to come back? It would be a factor within my decision, certainly. Ah, oh, you go, kids. You know all the dancing could be for naught. Remember, there may be no NBA season for the Bulls to worry about. Although the Players Union is doing its part to stop the lockout, filing a grievance with the National Labor Relations Board, and now the owners have answered back with a date, August 6th. That's when the commissioner, David Stern, and the players' rep, Charles Smith, will hold the next meet and greet. It's all in the owners and the league's hands. The, we have, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we're not striking. They locked the doors on us. They said, we're not paying you. They basically uh, have all the cards, and we're just sitting back and waiting to see how this thing is going to pan out. Again, it's all in the owners' hands and the league's hands of how this is going to pan out. But you can guarantee it won't be the player's fault if the league does not start on time this year because we are ready to play and we're ready to go back to the gym. All right, while the Bulls once again take over the headlines in Chicago, Albert Bell of the White Sox took his hot back to the Bronx. 